So a couple of those um, things that you've really done to reach out in the community, I wanted to kind of touch on. Um, one of those that I think is a, a really interesting challenge for Kelly Ross specifically is the opioid epidemic. You know, I read that um, in 2020, there were like more people dying from overdoses than in any other year. And yeah. Seattle is is definitely kind of if you look at a heat map, there's definitely you know uh, a, a lot of a lot of action in that area and and King County and then the the counties bordering, you know. So what have what have you done to help combat that? Yeah, uh, well, thank you for bringing that up. It's something that I'm particularly passionate about. Um, and you're talking about the a lot of the work that we've done to provide. Uh, naloxone as uh, take-home naloxone kits uh, for anybody that wants one. Uh, the The history of that um, is very personal. Um, I lost a cousin to an opioid overdose, uh, and uh, that was in 2011. And that that's kind of what uh, got me started in this work. I um, was very fortunate to um, work with Caleb Banta Green at the University of Washington, and uh, we developed um, really the first of its kind a, a collaborative drug therapy agreement uh, to provide take home naloxone to, to anybody that was at risk of an overdose or at risk of witnessing an overdose. Um, and uh, started offering these kits, and um, along with that, started creating training. Uh, we created some training videos uh, that could be accessible and disseminated to anybody that uh, needs to have one. I started doing a lot of um, presentations with parent support groups um, and eventually um, developed a relationship with Seattle King County Public Health. Um, and that's when things have really taken off uh, because this has been a priority for uh, the county um, to address uh, the rising overdose uh, deaths. And so we've, to this point, we've, uh, we've delivered thousands of take-home naloxone kits, uh, both to individuals, to small groups, to larger organizations, um, and just finding ways to facilitate that, make it accessible, uh, but also to provide that training education uh, so people feel empowered uh, to um, know how to respond to an overdose because it, it can happen to anybody. And yeah. as you mentioned, um, overdoses, and it's not just <clears throat> Seattle, it's around the country, uh, but they're up uh, 30% this past year. Uh, so the the COVID pandemic really exacerbated things. Yeah, I, I think, you know, that's one of those, one of those social issues that even a couple of years ago, you know, it, it seemed like it was uh, a bit more removed, but, you know, I think most people have a, a firsthand experience with that, someone in their family, someone they know. And even just a few years ago, I think naloxone was something that maybe was available from an EMS crew, but even the responding police officers may not have naloxone on hand. Yeah. And, you know, it, it kind of uh, goes to a lot of what we endeavor to do at Kelly Ross. Is like there, there's nothing – more normal than walking into a pharmacy. And so trying to, you know, find some of these uh, opportunities uh, to take what would otherwise be, you know, a, a challenging healthcare interaction and bring it into community pharmacy and normalize it. And whether that's, you know, around providing naloxone or HIV prevention clinics, uh, a lot of these things we just, you know, if we can remove that stigma and make it easy for people, um, you know, it it's good for pharmacy, it's good for the community, and uh, it's uh, it's a great opportunity. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of times that's kind of that that lifeline that you know, if, if you can be candid about it, if you can be open, if you can open those lines of communication, you know, obviously there's other issues beyond the overdose that need to be addressed. But, you know, I, I really feel like just having that communication and, and that like access to somebody who cares, uh, might be, you know, at, at least a, a positive step forward at addressing those other issues. Yeah. And, and what 
we learned from doing with this naloxone, um, it, it was unique in that, um, you know, when we've tried to build other services, whatever they are, and any, any pharmacy owner has <laughs> gone through this, you know, it's, it's knocking on a lot of doors and getting a lot of doors slammed in your face. Um, never ran into that with naloxone. Yeah. Everybody was willing to talk about it because, you know, there's just this tremendous need and, uh, and it, so it was a really easy way to start new relationships with different community organizations. And that's led to a lot of other great things. Uh, but you're right. It's, uh, I think just normalizing that conversation and pharmacists are, are great people to do that. Thanks for listening to this clip from Beyond the Scripts, presented by the Catalyst Pharmacy Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please support our channel by liking, subscribing, and clicking the notification bell so that you'll be notified anytime we post new content. To stay up to date with all of the latest independent pharmacy news and content, follow Pioneer RX on your preferred social media platform.